Jason Tatum, another big time play over to Smart. Welcome into Celtics Post Game Live, presented by your New England Ford dealers. Eddie House, Kendrick Perkins, Amina Smith here with you. And the Celtics beat the Nets in Game 3, 109 to 103. The Celtics now up 3 0 in this series. And I have to note, no team has ever come back from a 3 0 deficit in the playoffs. With that being said, Eddie House, how did the Celtics impose their will tonight? All night defensively, uh, they were turning these guys over and it was leading to points. There's 21 total turnovers for 37 points. And you win basketball games that way. When you get extra possessions by playing great defense and when you get those extra possessions by playing great defense, turn them into points, it's tough for anybody. And I don't care who you got on the other team. I don't, it's tough to overcome that. You have to have uh, guys that are making shots nonstop and with the way the Celtics play defense, that's not happening. Perk, the Celtics take a 3-0 lead in this series. Your biggest takeaway after this win? Well, well first of all, E House, stop with the television voice at this moment, okay? <laughs> what are Listen. you talking about? The, this, is, this, is, this is what I'm talking about. Look, the Celtics has snatched the Nets' soul. Mm. They're punking them. They're punk KD. They didn't make Kevin Durant quit. He had no interest whatsoever in playing this That's game. Mm. He was not engaged. And think about this for a second. Some people really were, some people are say, were saying that Katie and Kyrie were the most skilled duo of all time. And what, what, are we, what, what, what did we just witness? We witnessed the Boston Celtics make both of those guys quit during a crucial game three at home. This is why I got the Celtics winning the championship this year. Ooh. Because if you could if you could do that to Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, you could do it to anybody else in the NBA. The only thing about the Celtics and the only question mark that, that's going to be out there, can they stay healthy? That's the only thing at this point. What they're doing right now defensively, they could lock up anybody in the league. Go to state. Phoenix, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Philly, Miami, you name it. This team is on the mission, and the basketball that they're playing on both ends of the floor is a beautiful thing to watch in its championship basketball at its finest. When I came into the studio at the end of this game, I said, the Celtics, they took Brooklyn's lunch money. They literally took their lunch they money did. in this game. They came out there, mm -hmm. and they took their lunch money in this one. All right, let's send it out to Abby Chin, who's with Marcus Smart right now. Whew. Marcus. You guys not dodging this Brooklyn Nets team. Now you go up 3-0. What are the emotions right now? One more. We ain't won anything. We played, we're playing against a really good team. You know, and, uh, you know, we've been making good plays, so we got one more on their home court to come out and do it. It ain't over. We ain't won anything. So we're happy, but we're not satisfied. You have largely held one of the greatest scores of a generation in check in Kevin Durant. Is this, I mean, historically, your defense, how good is it? It's great, man. You know, we all help each other. You know, we, we all can sit down and guard our own yard, but we also there to help one another. We got the link, we got the athleticism, we got the speed, we got the IQ, and we got the toughness. So we got to keep going at all costs. You had some big buckets tonight. But Jalen Brown in the fourth quarter in this series, what comes over him? Whatever it is, we need to make sure it come over him every night. I mean, he's a force, man. I mean, he can score at every level. And the way that he, he, he works at his game, man, you see it every day, and we need that. And I'm so very proud of him, you know. Um, he's been doing a lot. He's been struggling early on, just like everybody else. But he continues to find a way to be the person that he is, and that's a great basketball player. Finally, Marcus, this series has been huge for left hands. Jason Tatum entered the chat. <laughs> you still number one? Still number one. I'll take it. <laughs> Marcus, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Scal joining us live from inside the Barclays Center. And Marcus Smart said it right there. He said, we want some more. We weren't dodging the Brooklyn Nets at all coming into the playoffs. Scal, what did you see out there on the floor tonight? Yeah, the defense is next level. I mean, absolutely. They go 
so many guys can guard, and if you get beat off the dribble, they scramble at a high level, and it's, it's amazing to watch. Like, this, like, Ime doesn't have to make decisions on who to play. Do I have an offensive team or a defensive team? Everybody on the team guards. Everyone has each other's back, and like, it, it was odd today to watch Kevin Durant be so frustrated. I've, I've seen him, you know, his whole career, watched him play, and he was the most frustrated I've ever seen him play, and he played with Russell Westbrook back in the day, so I can only imagine how he's had some nights but today he was barking at his team all game long 16 points on 11 shots for Kevin Durant Eddie just what was you know able how were the Celtics able to frustrate Kevin Durant in this game I think they just put bodies on him they constantly touching they're up under they're taking away his airspace he doesn't have any clean looks and when he wants to get his ball, the ball in his spot and in rhythm, at times he wasn't. His teammates weren't getting him the ball. But again, that falls on Steve Nash for this reason. He's not finding ways to get him in, in easy shots. Everything is a force. You're trying to go against a brick wall, fight through this brick wall, which is the Celtics defense. It's not easy mm -hmm. for any team, and let alone Kevin Durant is looking at two, three guys behind him, and he's not getting any help from his, uh, from his coach. I mean, I see why he's frustrated, but he only took 11 shots. Trust me, I don't think guys like – I don't think – when we start talking about these great scores, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, they say, give me the ball, move out the way, and let me go. They're going to go out shooting 29, 30 shots. Mm -hmm. They're not going to only shoot 11. Go ahead, Perk. Uh, you, you know what's crazy right now, Mina, is, is Scal and E-House, they're really tripping me out at this moment. Okay. Here, here's the thing. <laughs> I can understand Steve Nash having to put Kevin Durant in position at times to be succe successful. I get all that. But it was moments in this game where Kevin Durant was going, he was voluntarily running to the corner and not even wanting the ball. He wasn't even fighting to get open. And I'm sitting up here saying, this is supposed to be considered, quote unquote, the best, the best basketball player in the league. And he was shying away from the moment. And I just, it, it, it just, breaking it down in layman's terms, it was because the Celtics was just punking him. And it started since game one. They're not backing down. They're getting physical. They're bumping him off his spots. He's hanging his head. He don't even want to touch the ball. Mm -hmm. And then when he is touching the ball, guess what? He's passing. It's like a hot potato he's trying to get rid of it so quick. <laughs> so I just don't understand when Scal and E-House, well, the defense was good. They were on, on the tide on the string and Steve that guy. <laughs> no, man, speak the real. I don't want to hear that TV talk right we, now. We, but look, what they did do, they did put him on punishment. Like you said, he went to the corner. They told him get to the corner, get there to the room. There we go. And that's what there he did. Go. They did put him, but it was the defense, though. And, again, you know, they didn't give – Steve Nash didn't give him no opportunities. But I never seen a superstar quit. At one time, Kobe Bryant, God bless his soul, I was uh, with the Suns, and he quit in game seven of the first round and didn't take a shot. And I've never seen a superstar do that – and quit on his team like that before. This was very close to it. Scal, how surprising. I'm, I'm not co-signing. I'm not, I'm not co-signing that, man. I'm not co-signing Kevin Durant quit. Uh, Kevin Durant, if I was them, uh -huh. this is what I would do. I'd play him at the point guard. He would get a chance to get his rhythm all the way up the floor, and he was just going to pick people apart. He, he could have had 30 assists tonight if the Nets knew what they were doing had spacing. But like you guys said, everything he did was tough. It was it would be easier for him just to get the ball and play and run the show, put Kyrie off the ball. I'd be shocked if Steve Nash, I'm telling you, I'd be shocked if Steve Nash does not play Kevin Durant at the point in the next game hey, to throw the Celtics what is off. Going, what's that? For, for, go ahead, well, go ahead. Go, for, First of all, Scal, Steve Nash hasn't done nothing all season. So for him to do anything at this point in time, we all will be shocked. But Steve Nash is not telling Kevin Durant not to go get the ball. Kevin Durant can go play the point guard position anytime he feel like it. He could wave Steve Nash off. He could wave Kyrie Irving off. It was times that I saw Bruce Brown dribbling the ball up the floor. That has nothing to do with Steve Nash. 